directive at the U.S. Air Force Academy requires cadets to use words that include all genders. Terms like mom, dad, boyfriend, or girlfriend are now off the table. And joining us this evening to discuss is Sharice Trump, executive director of Speech First. Sharice, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. So the Air Force is calling it offensive language. I mean, even terms like you guys, uh, I understand, have to be replaced with terms like team folks or you all, um, or y'all, I should say. And uh, apparently even mom and dad is no longer allowed. Um, what is this all about and why is this happening now? Yeah, so we've seen this before on college campuses where they put out lists of terms that are either very strongly suggested that you don't use because they're too gender specific or there's other terms on there that could be triggering to students um, and cause them to be upset. So we've seen that before in the academy. What the interesting thing here is that this is a military academy. So obviously, when you go to a military academy, the list of prioritizations should be slightly different than your typical and traditional college experience um, because you are preparing leaders who are supposed to lead uh, during wartime, during times of national security, um, and, and you kind of have these, these various ways of thinking that are different than what you're getting out of your traditional college experience. So that's what makes the situation pretty unique. Um, and obviously what the goal here is, is, is not unique. Uh, it's obviously the same as what we've seen across campuses across the country, which is this propagation of woke ideology, right? This, this pushing of, of say anything that basically offends or contradicts the woke dogma that, that the far left is pushing on college campuses is essentially going to be outlawed, restricted, or could lead to serious consequences. Yeah, and it's so curious because the U.S. military really does have a tradition of being nonpartisan, mm -hmm. but this seems pretty partisan, at least to me. Uh, your thoughts on that, and, and do you think a line was crossed here? Yeah, I absolutely do think a line was crossed. I mean, this is a really big concern for the military because, as you mentioned, they're not supposed to be political inside the military, but at the same time, they're not supposed to be used as a political football between the two parties, right? Even though our military system in this country is that it is civilian controlled, it is so important that the civilians who control our military service prioritize the effectiveness and the readiness of the military, not where they stand politically and don't use the military for their own uh, political agenda. And that's what we're seeing right here. And, you know, right now the, the military is at record low recruitment rates. And you start to ask yourself, OK, what is the reason why people aren't joining anymore? What is the reason people aren't signing up? And part of the reason might be that individuals just don't want to deal with some of the stuff they know that they're going to have to when it comes to DEI training and mandated uh, training with like transgenderism and, and various other diversity uh, kind of like woke versions of what they should be studying. You know, we just heard not too long ago that they were pushing marks, marks essentially in, in their actual recommended reading list. Um, so this is something that has been happening for the last two years. And I think people are starting to pick up on that. Yeah, it seems very, very concerning. Uh, and a recent study by the Heritage Foundation rated U.S. military strength as weak and the Air Force in particular uh, very weak. Uh, how does teaching cadets to use proper pronouns, how does that build a warfighter? And can you foresee any effect on recruitment efforts? Yeah, I think this is a really serious concern with regards to readiness and effectiveness because what usually within the military, you want to have units that are cohesive, right? You want to have people who could interact with each other and speak with one another on, on a level playing field. And when you're emphasizing the differences and the identity differences of each individual in the military, you're breaking down the exact thing that the military was designed to actually avoid, which is that, again, that kind of like political discomfort amongst individuals where everyone is emphasizing their differences rather than the reason that they're actually there, which they all have in common. And that creates a sense of enmity amongst them. And it can cause serious issues within ranks. It can cause disruptions within the leadership and how they're communicating with their with their lower ranking individuals. So any, any military service member is, is going to face these challenges um, already on their own for the political leaders to actually be emphasizing this and telling them they should be paying even more attention to it, it's gonna cause a serious lack of cohesion within the services. Well, Sharice, thank you so much for your time. There's so much more we could talk about it, but unfortunately we have to leave it right there. Thank you so much.